The Balkan Ethno Orchestra was founded in Sydney in 2019 by a group of friends with a common love for traditional Balkan music. They have been busy studying ancient scripts to create a repertoire of songs that emulate the interesting history of their Balkan homeland. They aim to share their beautiful multicultural sound with Australia and the whole world. The Balkans is a region in southeastern Europe which includes countries such as Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Bulgaria and Romania. Ethno music is the name for the traditional music of this region, encompassing traditional songs, utilizing both traditional instruments and musical elements with some modern twists. We're here today to hear those modern twists live with the Balkan Ethno Orchestra. My name is Marin. I'm Dragan. Uh, what role do you play in the Ethno Orchestra? So what is it that you do? I play guitar. I'm the keyboard, the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys meet, so you two? Well, we know each other for a long time. You know, so we used to play in other bands. And... Uh, Another genre. It was more different, rock and roll. Uh, yeah, different music too. So um, basically, a few years ago, we started uh, sort of uh, playing this sort of music, and um, over time, it just grew into a little bit like uh, we got more members as well, and then grew like the whole band uh, became what it is today, basically. You know, so um, yeah. yeah, every everybody in the band sort of got the same direction and passion for old traditional songs where put a little bit of a twist on them, modernize them with instruments that are available today and you can like bass electric gu instruments, bass guitars and keyboards together with old traditional instruments like we've got a Kaval here as well which mm -hmm. is centuries old. And, and what about, uh, how many members are there in the band? There's uh, currently 12 people. Like is that right? 13, yeah. 13. Yeah, Could be right. Yeah, yeah, so um, because we, we have a um, flute player as well and we have a violin and another drum. Uh, yeah, drummer with a drum kit, another um, couple of singers as well, girls. So I said 12 or 13, depends on the availability, you know. <laughs> everybody's everybody's yeah. on holidays yeah. this time yeah. of the year, so, so yeah. So it sounds like uh, the band, the group is a growing sort of thing. Uh, so how do people hear about us? So obviously, uh, not everyone can join. You have to play an instrument or you have to sing. So how do people hear about it? Well, we, we um, play concerts, basically, and uh, people know about us in our community, the Serbian community. And uh, people come to our gigs, our concerts. And they they see us and uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram, like uh, all that helps a lot too. So um, and we talk word of mouth. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we've we've actually created a little bit of a following. So it started the right way. We're just trying to, I reckon, attract more people with with these other uh, beautiful melodies and excellent heart like lush harmonies in all this stuff that we do so I think we have to accent all this stuff a little bit more and then again modernize the sound so it's attractive to the younger crowd as well. So you did mention that there's quite a following uh how do they hear your music when it's not on during con during concerts so is it available perhaps somewhere online to yeah. be listened to? We've got a couple of videos on YouTube uh we will have a few more coming up. We want to record, we're actually planning to record this previous month, but again, as I said, a lot of our people are from Europe and the Balkans, they go back there on holiday during summer. Nobody's here, like, it was really hard even to put this rehearsal together. We're still missing a couple of people. So we've actually moved everything for a couple of months back, but it's gonna go out there, it's gonna be out there soon, so. These songs um, just survived like uh, hundreds of years, basically. That's, uh, that means they're really good quality songs, you know. They're not recorded, like they, record, they are recorded today, but back in the day, they, they're just like, uh, they were just uh, over, over generations, they passed on to um, 
newer generations, yeah? Well, so. we're, we're actually worried that these songs are going to get forgotten, you know, and this is sort of one way that, one approach that we put to preserve, to preserve them, yeah? So, as I said, we're trying to modernise it a little bit, fuse it with this whether it be blues or rock, whatever it is, just so it's more attractive to the younger people. Hi, my name is Anja and I'm a member of the Balkan Ethno Orchestra. So would you be able to tell me a bit about the Ethno Orchestra? Yeah, so we're a group of um, musicians and singers um, that are looking to preserve Balkan music in Australia. So we mix Balkan tr traditional music with modern music elements to create a brand new musical experience. So how did the group come along? Uh, we all met um, through various other musical projects and all kind of found a really keen interest in this sort of music and from then on the bonds that we created we decided to start the Balkan Ethno Orchestra this year. So it's a brand new, uh, so it's a brand new group is that right? Yeah, yeah we started this year earlier, just founded. <laughs> and have you been performing anywhere at all? Um, so we're currently, we've got a few performances lined up. Um, as we're a new ensemble, we're looking um, to play at a few festivals and things like that. We're going to be playing opening for um, world music band Synthesis that play primarily Macedonian music. Um, so we're going to be opening for them in November. We have got an Instagram account, um, Facebook under the Balkan Ethno Orchestra. So if you want to learn more, hear our songs um, and get in touch, feel free. So what kind of songs do you play? So we play um, traditional songs from all over the Balkans. So um, you're looking at songs from Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, Bulgaria as well. Um, and these are songs that are mainly from the villages that depict village life and tell stories that are centuries, centuries old. And what about you personally? What is your background? Um, so I'm, I, my background is Serbian, but I'm born um, in Australia. So is it important for you to keep your culture alive? Yeah, so I think we're all, we all really, really love this music and getting the opportunity to keep it going here in Australia and represent um, the various countries that have such beautiful songs is really, really important. And I think it connects people in a really um, valuable way. Uh, so when was, if you perhaps recall or remember, the first time that you heard this type of music? I think for all of us in the band, we can say that we've been listening to this sort of music since we were born. Our, our parents um, showed us this wonderful traditional music and um, yeah, it's, it's just something that's been with us forever. And what is your personal favourite song or composition? Uh, my personal favourite is called, it's, it's a song called Vrbice Vrbo Zelena. Um, and it's kind of like a, metaphor, a metaphorical song about um, 
a willow tree that's blossomed and it's representative of a girl that's blossoming with age. I'm Maya and I'm Alenka. And what role do you play in the band? So um, both Alenka and I are backing vocals, so we um, provide the harmony. And for a person, for me personally, I don't sing at all. Is that hard to be singing uh, back vocals as well as portraying the nature of the song? Uh, yeah, it is uh, slightly difficult because you have to block out the lead melody, so you have to be able to block it all out to sing it so yeah it can be difficult sometimes. It sounds different so you know like usually when you hear the song for the first time and when you like the song you learn what you hear but no one actually hears the backup voices so it's hard because you have to uh, learn the new song in a new way in a different way but we, we also sing like um, we have certain songs where we sing like the first voice as well. So it's actually a mixture of everything. Depend on a song and depend on the on the voice as well. You know, like we we like there is a four of us at the moment, we have two more singers. Um everyone has a different type of voice and every uh, song depends um the men's actually uh, maybe a slightly different, you know, um approach. So we're trying to actually figure out which songs is the best for what voice. And that's how it works. What's actually the best for the song, you know. Mm -hmm. And are there ever instances where you're not backed up by any instruments at all? Yes, yes. Uh, we have actually a few songs where it's all, all uh, a cappella. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I did hear that uh, the songs that you sing, they resonate with you because they are about your culture. You can understand the words. How do you think that an only English speaker uh, feels the songs and how does it resonate with them? That's a great question. <laughs> um, look, I must say that um, even though um, I can understand, um, my background is Serbian, I was born here. So there's some aspects that I don't understand every single word because it's very old, can be very old, um, which then prompts me to then look up the words <laughs> um, so that I understand what I'm singing. Um, but it, it's, uh, I think also it really draws, um, I you think the rhythm, actually yeah. the rhythm of the song is the most important here yeah. for the people with a different background who can't understand what we're singing yeah. about, yeah. uh, because we have a lot of drums today. You just saw one drummer, but we had like whole set of drums and, um, like different traditional instruments as well, um, as like, uh, Eva plays Cavalli and um, the, the whole atmosphere, I think it's something different, you know, that people didn't have a chance to see uh, before. So that's what withdraws them the most. Before performing a certain song, do you ever explain to the audience uh, what it means? So to give them some background knowledge? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, because like uh, these songs, either they're about love towards the country, uh, nature or love between two people. That's the mostly what we sing about. So we section those songs into those three or four groups. And uh, before every section, we explain to people, okay, this is about like boy and girl. And it's usually lo like, uh, because in olden days, uh, it was completely different, you know, girls were forbidden to walk alone, you know, especially at the night time. And then these boys, they had to come and approach and ask parents. And there was a lot of rules, you know, involved. So it's usually girls waiting for boys to react, to do first step, to do something. And then they're sad, they're crying, they, you know. Uh, so a lot of songs, it's a love songs. And then, as I said, there are a few others which uh, describes the beauty of the country where we come from. And I have to say, all these songs come from people. So if you ask who wrote these songs, people wrote them. Because they used to go to the fields, do the hard work, and then at the, at the evening, let's say all these women from the um, village, they would come along together, knit, do this kind of stuff, and they would start singing uh, about probably situation what happened that day. And that's how these songs actually uh, uh, you know, came to life. And what is your personal favorite song? Gora, for me, yeah. For me, there is a song you haven't heard today. It's called Jovano Jovanke, which is about a girl called Jovana. And because I have a daughter called Jovana, obviously, you know, that's my favorite song. Is it important to you to keep your culture alive? Absolutely. And I think this is one great opportunity that we have that we can actually, um, you know, display our cultural heritage and to keep it alive so I think it you know it's really important it's also like you know as a parent this is something that I want to leave for my future generations you know one day who knows like out of my three kids maybe someone is going to join us you know and continue to do this and as we live in a multicultural society I think it's good to share what we have to offer you know because someone did mention that all these songs were passed on from generation to generation. Yes. So essentially now you're doing the same thing, I guess? Yes, it's a lot harder in these uh, circumstances, uh, especially when you live in, f let's say, foreign country, like it's Australia's home to all of us now. Uh, but it's a lot harder to present this, especially for all other cultures to understand where we come from. And uh, I think in a way it's our duty to do that. You know, like back home, it's something that is natural. It comes natural, you know, because everyone does it in the villages. And like new generations, they don't think about it. It just comes like naturally to them. But here we have to put an effort to do that in, in order to, you know, leave this for our kids so they can, um, let's say, maintain that in the future.